Good morning. How are you guys doing? I busted a sweat up there this morning. That was good. Hey, uh, listen, we do a lot in the community as House of Grace, and we've got our day of blessing that's coming up. And so pastors asked me to come up here and just spotlight one, just one of the ministries that we give to on a regular basis, kind of tell you about it. A lot of you already know about it, but we have a lot of new people in the church as well. One of the things that we give to is called Phased In. And what that is, you may not know that 1,200 youth that phase out of foster care, just in the state of Texas, they get just taken to a homeless shelter when the money runs out and the foster family doesn't want to adopt them. They turn 18 years old and on their 18th birthday, they literally get dropped off. And so we found this was an epidemic. And so we were like, you know what? We're going to be the hands and the feet of Jesus Christ. And so we created a center down in Arlington. It is called Phased In. That, that process of being dropped out or going out of foster care is, being, is called Phased Out. And so this program is called Phased In. And so one of the things that we're going to be doing on our day of blessing, which is the Sunday right before Thanksgiving, is we're going to be creating stockings. We have uh, beds in the Arlington campus for uh, like 18 young ladies. Right now, I think we've got about eight or nine. And these girls come in and they are, you can imagine, they've been from home to home to home and a lot of them are still in high school. They don't have anything. And so we want to be a family to them. And so House of Grace has stepped in to do that. And so I just wanted to thank you for your prayers and your support and know that your, your church is giving to this organization. And we've got a great thing that we're going to be doing on the, on the Day of Blessing. Thank you, Joel. Well, at the very end, we had one of our baptism people show up a little bit late, so we're going to baptize one more at the end. Amen? Amen. So we're going to get going to that, and I'm, so I'm going to preach this morning. And uh, so if you're a guest in the room that came for baptism uh, to see somebody, thank you for coming and, and being a part of us today. Hopefully you already felt God's presence. And uh, yeah, so when, it, when we actually start shouting at the very end of service, everybody's like waving like they fans. So do y'all want us to keep turning it down lower, the AC? I don't know. It's just, it's just one of those things. I was like, yeah, I like when people are fanning. That means we can turn it down. Yeah, whatever, whatever. You gain some weight. And then so here we go. Here we go. So, all right, so my, my title of my message is simply this, is are, are you a friend of God? Are you a friend of God? Well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. No, I'm just joking. How many of you have good friends? Yeah? How many of you have so-so friends? Yeah? Some of you are looking around right now. How many of you have great friends? Yeah? How many great friends do you have? Two. Most people have less than five. Most people have. How many have uh, more than five so-so friends? Ten? Fifteen? How many of you just have good friends? Just good friends? Good friends? Good friends? Yeah. So what does a uh, friend, a great friend look like? You know, uh, we see this. I'm going to just do some characteristics and we'll get into this message here. But uh, we, we know that a good friend, they love you. I mean, we see that even Jonathan and David in the Bible. Man, they, they loved each other as like brothers. They're trustworthy. How many of you have some trustworthy friends? They're reliable they're loyal. They stand through you by th through thick and thin. I mean, they are there for you. Is that right? Uh, how many of you have any friends that bring you down to reality? Once you start getting a little bit higher than what you think, there's like, man, you suck. <laughs> I have friends like that. Keeps you from getting prideful. Keeps you from getting all those kind of things. They're just like, no, nah, no, 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 you're, you're really right. <laughs> Come on now. I know you. Yeah, you already say that? Yeah. I know you. Yeah. They respect you. How many of you, uh, they respect your boundaries for the most part, except when they want to get in your business? They hurt when you hurt. And they cry when you cry. They seek you out. How many of you have friends that seek you out? They check on you. They do those things. They listen to you. How many of you ever... Uh, have you ever had a friend that you listen to, but you're really not listening because they talk about it all the time. You just sort of set the phone down and just walk away. But you, that's truly being a friend. They don't know it. They're not in the room with you. But you truly, I mean, you're, they're listening to all their problems no matter what. Uh, they spend quality time. How many of you know that quality time is, you know, hard to do now with all the cultural and all the things that we do? Spending quality time together is rough, but they choose to do that. They show appreciation to each other. They help you again in need. And they share laughter. 
And they also do things that, that you want to do with them, that you love being around them because you have qualities that you like doing. They would do anything for you. So today when we're talking about this, are you a friend of God? We start serving God. We have a, sometimes we have an unknown relationship with him. We really don't know who he is. And he knows everything about us, but we really don't know who he is. And we're trying to figure out his character. We're trying to figure out what he's asking of us, what he wants from us, what our responsibilities are, and all those kind of things. And, you know, we want to know how to serve him, how to obey him, how to listen, consequences for not listening. I mean, you ever, I mean, is that when we start learning about God, you're trying to, it's like you almost have a list of things that you want to try to check off because you want to do the right thing in every situation. Is that correct? Is that not? Because you really are trying to figure out who he is. It says in Hebrews 12, 5 and 6, it says, and have you forgotten the encouraging words God spoke to you as his children, he said? My child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline. Don't you love the Lord's discipline? So don't make light of the Lord's discipline. And don't give up when he corrects you. For the Lord disciplines those he what? He does what to those he loves? And he punishes each one he accepts as his child. He punishes those who he accepts as his child. See, sometimes when we start off our relationship, how many of you may not be a parent in the room, but you may be a teenager, so you may be on the other end of the spectrum, but let me just be honest with you, as teenagers in the room, your parents are not supposed to be your friends. No, that should have got a good amen. Because <laughs> if you're your friends with your kids, they're never going to respect you. As parents, we understand this as we're trying to do the best we can for our kids. We're trying to do some things, but there are some things that we want our kids to do. We want our kids to obey us, to respect us, to understand what we're wanting from them, to understand all these qualities and traits that we want our kids to understand. And so your, your parents are not against you. They're just trying to teach you the things that you need for life and future in life. And they're trying to help you. In the same way I was thinking about that parental relationship that God has with us, is that he's our father, that sometimes when we first off being a Christian and we start our Christian walk, he is disciplining us, he is correcting us, he's showing the things that we need to do He's trying to say, don't do that. That's not good for you. And how many of you know, as a teenager, I've been there a long time ago. You're there sometimes but when your parents say, don't do that. You're like, why? It's like, shut up. Why? No, 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 no. But you just say, why? Why? Why can't I? And you have a lot more whys than we do. We have a lot more questions than we have answers. But later in life, if we do this right, later in life, what happens is that... If you do learn what your parents like, if you do learn like what your, the person who is over you, your guardian or whoever it is, learns to like, then later in life you become friends. You understand what is expected from each other. You understand that relationship of mutual respect, love, kindness, friendship, that I'm not gonna do anything to hurt you and you're not gonna do anything to hurt me. You still with me this morning? So I ask you this, when does our relationship transition from servant to friendship? When does that transition? See, the reason some people's relationship never goes or becomes stagnant with Christ is because they never, ever figure out that friendship relationship. All it is is God, me, I got to do all these things. That's what, that was, that's what the relationship becomes. God is God. He's way up here. I've got to do all these things. And there's just a list of things I have to do. How many of you had the list growing up of all the things you could and could not do? It's called religion. And then, so we go through all those kind of things. But we had all these things we could and we could not do. And then we were just rebelling against God. We're rebelling against God. We're rebelling against God. I said, this is stupid. I quit. Because you not have moved into the friendship. You're just a servant. You're just a servant. And the way we would treat our, you know it because you work, the way we treat our bosses, hopefully is not the same way we treat Jesus. 
I'll stop there. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yes, we're really getting after there. Now, he will always be holy. He will always be mighty. He will always be powerful. He will always be, again, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He always deserves the respect that he deserves on a godly note. I mean, he, he, he deserves all those kind of things. And there cannot be any disrespect of who he truly is. As David says, that he is God and we are just ants. We are just ants. And, he does, and David goes on to say, I don't know why he would even look at me. And yet he does. Why would he pay attention to me? But the honest truth is that he wants to have a relationship with you like you've never ever experienced. He does. John 15, 14 through 17, it says this. You are my friends if you do what? What I command. When do you, what happens here? It says, you are my friends if you do what? Hmm. You think, man, why am I not a friend of God? Because one of the things he says, it says, you are my friends if you do what I command. It says, I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. You think, why doesn't God talk to me more? Are you trustworthy? Are you loyal? Do you love him? Do you love what he loves? Do you care about what he cares about? I'm going somewhere with this this morning, so hang on. Now you are my friend since I have told you everything the Father had told me. Man, Jesus wants you to give you the keys of the kingdom and the secrets of the kingdom. He wants to give you those things. You didn't choose me, I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. This is my command, love each other. We see this throughout the Bible. We see Enoch. I don't know if you remember know Enoch in the Genesis that he was a, a Methuselah's son and I believe it was Methuselah, not the other way around. But either way, they were related. And so Enoch was walking with God and, and it just says that they fellowshiped every day and eventually God said, you know what? It's just too far to go back to your house. Why don't you just come to heaven with me? Man, imagine that relationship. That every day that you communed with God and he just said, hey, you know what? Why don't you just go home with me? And that's what I want. Adam and Eve, it says that every day before the, the fall of man, that every day in the cool of the day, that, that God would come down and commune with them and fellowship with them. See, God always wanted a friendship, relationship with them. Talking about Abraham in Isaiah 41, 8, it says, But as for you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, my chosen one, descended from Abraham, what? Descended from Abraham, my friend. My friend. James 2, 23, says, And it so happened, just as the scripture says, Abraham believed God, and God counted. What did he say? He said, Abraham believed God, and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. He was even called the what? Friend. Because he believed God. Because he trusted God. I mean, look what what God calls Abraham, his friend. We all know that Abraham had some areas he had to learn to trust. I mean, you remember Isaac and Ishmael, that whole thing we still got going on in the Middle East over there? The promise went ahead and had his son, was not the promise. He even, even though God said, I'm gonna take you into a land, he still about every king that came up, he was still, if he had truly trusted God, he wouldn't have ever done this because he knew God would have protected him and kept him through all that. But every time he came up with a king and his wife must have been beautiful, even at 90, they said she was beautiful. Wow. I'm just being honest with you, there's not many 90 year olds now I'm thinking, wow, <laughs> that I would say, I wanna be that to be my wife. No offense, Miss Twilight, looking great. By the way, Texas lost bad yesterday. It was great. <laughs> Alabama lost too. They, they stink too, man. I'd be there with you in LSU. We can celebrate sitting at home watching the playoffs. And here we go. Yeah, I couldn't let that one go. But he, if he would have trusted God, he would have known all these things were 
happened. He didn't know that he didn't have to lie, but he was still having a couple issues trusting God. He's trying to figure it out. When he was told to sacrifice his son on the mountain and was about to kill him, the angel stopped him and said this, and this is a very powerful statement, Genesis 22. It says, they already went up the mountain. <laughs> Isaac's carrying the, the, the wood and all this kind of stuff, and he's asking his dad, hey, where's the sacrifice? <laughs> he didn't say, you're it. He just said, God will provide. I don't think the boy would have went. He'd be like, no, dad, I think we're going to do something else. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. But he's about to sacrifice him. He had him tied up, and he's about to sacrifice his boy. Verse 12, it says, Do not the angel uh, do not harm the boy, the angel said. Do not do anything to him. For I know that you fear God because you did not withhold your son, your only son from me. And that's a very powerful statement. This was the promised son that they'd been waiting for that they didn't have until they were over 190 years old. I mean, and God said, hey, I want you to do this last thing for me. And he said, he says, do not do anything for I know that you fear God because you did not withhold your son, your only son, this most precious possession. I mean, isn't that an awesome testimony that we want God to say about our own lives that if God asked that we would not hold anything from him? Man. Wouldn't that be an awesome testimony if God could say of us, I know now that you won't hold, withhold anything that I ask of you. Remember the rich young ruler? He said, man, you've done everything great, but I want you to go and sell all your riches because that's what you're holding on to. And he walked away sad because he said, oh, that's, that's too great. I won't do it. Maybe that was the time that God said, you know what? Maybe that was the time, and this is not biblical. I'm just talking about my own personal Pastor John opinion here. Maybe it was at that moment when Jesus said, you know what? Or God said, you know what? That Abraham, he's my friend. I haven't withheld anything that I have. And he hasn't withheld anything he has. After three years with his disciples, I was thinking, man, three years, that's a long time, but Jesus didn't call them friends till the end of the three years. He didn't start off by saying, hey, friend, won't you follow me? But he said, after three years, he said, y'all are no longer my servants, but my friends. But you remember what he said earlier in the scripture? He said that he had confided the father's heart into them and taught them all that he did. And there was become a mutual respect. They're saying, you know what? I'm going to do this. Even Peter, you know, we always make fun of Peter because he denied Jesus. But he said, you know, wherever you go, I want to go. He wanted to, he was ready to fight for his friend. There's just something that's changed. Jesus calls his disciples friends in the Bible. The Greek word used is philos. Is that the right word, Ramon? You know that? Which translates to friend and signifies a deep reciprocal love and relationship. Essentially meaning that Jesus sees his disciples as his close companions then. Who share in his life knowledge, not just servants following orders, it indicates a level of intimacy and trust beyond a mere master servant. It also goes beyond a casual friendship and implies a strong bond built on mutual understanding and shared values. When we think of uh, Jesus and God, our relationship should change. Our relationship should change. See, we know that God is able to heal. We know that God is able to change. God is able to do this. God is able to perform miracles. He's, he's able to make a, a streams in the desert. He's able to make a way where there seems to be no way. We sing those songs. He's able to do all of those things. But when we become, when we say, God, you truly are my friend and I'm not just your servant, then we realize that not only is he able, that he wants to. 
See, there's not many things of people or their friends or friend, close friends or even good friends in the room that you know that I would not do anything for you. I would try to do everything impossible in my power to do those things for you. And if me with human things, with human intentions and human motives and all those kind of things, if me as a human is wanting to do that, just imagine when God is your friend. Not, we're just not servants, but he is, he wants to become our friend. We realize that we know he can heal, but he also wants to heal. We realize we need to spend time with him, but we long to spend time with him. That he wants to spend time with us, but we should long to spend time with him. We understand he wants to help us. We realize he wants to, us to enjoy life. He doesn't expect us to live a life that is not worth living. He wants us to enjoy life. He wants you to succeed in everything that you do. He wants to try to find ways to bless you. He wants to encourage us. He knows what we like. See, we realize that God is for us and not against us. As a servant, we think, man, God is this and this. When you're talking to God as a servant, you talk to him from afar. When I talk to God as a friend, he's very intimate and close. Very intimate and close. But I've had to learn before he, before he becomes intimate and close, I have to learn to respect him, obey him, do the things that I need to do. So again, as I, even as that parent-teenager relationship, teenagers, you want to be friends with your parents? Then obey them now. Because later in life, you'll be friends. But if you don't, then you're gonna fight. I always told my boys growing up, I said, if we keep going like we're going, we're gonna fight. And later in life, I told him, I told him right out, I didn't, even, I didn't even try to hide it from him. I said, if we keep going like we're doing, we're never gonna have a relationship when we get older. Because I have to be dad and you have to be son and child. I said, but I can't stop doing my job because I'm gonna be held accountable by God. Same way with the Father. He wants to teach us. He wants to guide us. He wants to direct us. Yes, we're, we start off as servants. And yes, I know that you can say friends because he loves you so much. I mean, he died on the cross for you. He did all those things for you, but it becomes a difference when that shift, when we become friends because that mutual respect, you love, you understand him, you know him, you want to please him. You, and he wants to do those things for you too. Can I be honest with you? As a servant, in my relationship as a servant of God, man, I did. I have a list. I'm thinking, man, if I do this and this and this and this and this and this and this, man, I'm pleasing God. Like I did my chore list. And I was thinking, that's how I'm going to draw close to God. But I realized, man, he wanted more from me than that. He didn't want it to be a chore, but he wanted it to be a lifestyle. He wanted to change who I was. He wanted me to become more like him, to look more like him. Proverbs 18, 24, Joel, why don't you get ready? Proverbs 18, 24 says that he is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. He is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Now, I tell you this, I even went through this whole situation this week where I have a friend that I was trying to reach out to and they ghosted me all week. Why are you laughing, Joel? Uh, somebody got some Kleenex? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Thank you. What I'm saying, though, that he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother, that he's always available. Some of my friends are busy, they got own stuff, they do this stuff, they got companies that are running, they do all that kind of stuff, and some of them just don't care. And so you know how that goes, but, but with Christ, he's always available. I mean, he's always available. He is a friend, he is at, 
We used to sing songs. He's, he's as close as the mention of his name. He is there because he wants that. Front. He wants us to do all those things. He is there even when you don't feel it all the time. Thank God I don't go by my feelings. If you're going by your feelings, man, you're going to have a rough life. But the Bible says that he will never leave me nor forsake me, that he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother, that he is there in the times that I'm hurting, the times I'm crying, the times that I succeed, the times that I, I, I just, man, I'm being blessed. He's there in every moment because he wants to share my life with me. John 15 says it like this. We just now read. This is the verse that goes before John 15, 14 through 17 we read earlier. It says, there is no greater love Man, he's, he's, about to, he's about to die on the cross. He's talking to his disciples. This is, right, this is the verse is right before he gets to the point of saying, I no longer call you servants, but I call you friends. But this is the verse before it says, there's no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friends. Again, if you do what I command. Jesus was saying, I'm not just gonna do it with words, but I'm gonna show you on the cross that you're no longer my servants, but I'm calling you my friend. I'm gonna lay down my life as a ransom for many, for all. He did that not just for his disciples, but he did each one of you because he said, I will lay down my life because I want to call you friend. I want to call you friend. I see this too. Every one of the disciples except for one reciprocated this to him. Even John was trying to. I mean, he tried to boil him in oil and tried to kill him like three times. It didn't work. You know, that would have been cool to be able to sit in the oil while it was bubbling and just be like, I mean, that would have been awesome. Been awesome. But all of them gave their life for their friend. I'll be honest with you, I'm just gonna make this little person. Well, when I die and go to heaven, or if Jesus comes and raptures me, I believe that's going to happen sooner than later. I want to say that maybe I didn't die for him, but I want to say that I gave my life for him. Did I live my life for my friend? That I did everything that I could for my friend. Not because he's my servant, but he was my friend. My friend. I ask you again today, are you a friend of God? Or do you have a relationship? You just have a checkbox of stuff. Do you know him? Are you seeking him? Are you learning about him? Or do you have a mutual respect that you're saying, you know what, I'm gonna do everything in my life to try to please him. I'm gonna try to live for him. I'm gonna worship him with my whole heart, my whole life. And every action that I take, it's gonna be because I want to know him as friends. What a testimony Abraham had. He says he was a friend of God. You're thinking, I don't know if I can do that. And there's a reason why it's a struggle because we have this thing called the flesh and we have the thing called the spirit. James 4.4, 4, I want you to put that scripture up. It says, you adulterers, you adulterers, don't you realize that friendship with the what? Don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I don't know about you, but enemy and friends don't sound 
Not like they're going to go together very well. It says you can't have a friendship with the world and have a friendship with God. You're going to have to choose which one you want to have a relationship with. You have to choose which one that you want to serve. Which one that you're going to feed in your life. God, I say it again, if you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. So in your life today, I ask this question. Every head bowed and every eye closed. My question to you is this. We're always gonna be servants to God, so don't, I don't want you to hear me wrong on that. We're always gonna be servants of God. But he is also a servant to us. He even washed the disciples' feet, the lowliest servant's job. Man, of the, of, the, of the room that was washing our feet, but he chose to do that to show that he was a servant. But isn't that what friendship truly is too? Is serving each other, living for each other, learning about each other, trying to please each other. In your life, only you know today, in your heart, you know today. Mariah, if you wanna head on up, if you want to, she already has, okay. If you want to, only you know today if you truly could say that, that you're trying the best or you are a friend of God. With every eye bowed, every eye closed, and every head bowed, just ask the question how many of you would say, you know what, I need to work on my relationship with God? I, I'm a servant, but I haven't. I haven't really got in that friend relationship. Yeah, a lot of hands. Yeah, a lot of hands. Don't be discouraged today because it's, it's one of those things you just keep working at, you keep working at, you keep working at. How many of you would say today, saying one of the reasons, Pastor John, that I feel like I can't be a friend of God is because I'm, there's some things in this world that I'm friends with and I need to stop doing those things. If that's you, will you raise your hand? See, I've got some things in this world that are got a, got a hold on me. Yeah, I see those hands. I want to pray for you today. It says, if you seek him, you will find him. If you draw close to him, he's going to draw close to you. I'm asking today, are you wanting to know him? If he's disciplining you right now, don't be upset. If, he, if, he's, if you're, you feel like, man, that you're going through some stages right now and you feel like God's far from you or different things, don't be upset. It says don't quit because he's teaching you to trust him, to be patient, to listen to his voice. He's teaching him, but all those things he's doing right now because it says that he loves you. He loves you. He still does those things. I'm his friend, but there's some things that that I've gotten a little bit too high for. He's had to bring me down to reality. Say, hey, you, gotta, you need to work on this and this. It's holding me accountable. I, I, I want to be a friend of God. and I'm trying, I'm trying. But we have to fight for it. So Father, would you see those who raise their hands and say, man, they want a deeper, deeper relationship with the Father. They want to be a friend of you. Lord, I'm asking, Lord, as they begin to, again, it says no greater love than one that lays down their life. So Father, Lord, in a spiritual way, we lay down our spiritual lives before you, saying, here we are. We surrender. We're not going to hold anything back from you. We're going to give it all to you today. We're going to live for you the best we can through the power of the Holy Spirit. We're going to honor you with all of our actions and our words and our deeds and everything we do. We're going to be honest. We're going to have integrity. We're going to have character. We're going to live like we need to, Father Lord, as we learn to trust you day after day. Lord, help us in this. Lord, this we have to fight our flesh. We have to fight all the things of what we're doing, Father. We have to, it's going to, it, takes, it takes work, discipline. 
So help us do that, Father. For those who raise their hands saying that they're, the reason it's hard to be a friend of God is because they have, they're still friends with some things in this world. Lord, I'm asking that you would help them. Lord, as they ask for, for repentance right now, just if you raise your hand, just say, Father, Lord, forgive me for these things. And be saying, Father, give me the courage to walk away. Give me the courage to turn around and walk away from these things. I don't want these things anymore because they, they're not helping me. They're just dragging me down. Help me today, Jesus. I want to live for you. I want to live and be like you today, Jesus. So today, Father, Lord, we, we say, Father, Lord, we want to move our relationship in the right direction, not just servants, but friends. We ask, Father, Lord, in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Will y'all help me today celebrate Mariah? Is she up there already? Yes, she is. We are ready to go. All right. So we got one more baptism today before we're done with service. So this is Mariah. And uh, Mariah, I mean, it's been awesome even being able to go to home groups with you and seeing what everything God's doing in your life. It's been awesome to hear and see. And so Mariah, do you believe in Jesus Christ, that he's your Lord and Savior? Do you plan on living for him for the rest of your life? All right, well. Yeah. Yeah, give it up for Mariah. Awesome. Yeah, Praise Mariah. God. Praise God. Well, today I am, uh, Dylan was going to do closing, but I decided I'd already be up here and he was uh, getting the waiters, so he's going to do that. So today, in closing, if you everybody pick up your little card that you have in your seat or if you don't have one of your seats, one next to you. But this coming up Sunday, uh, Sunday evening from uh, 5 to 8, we have our fall festival. We don't invite the whole community to fall festival on, on purpose. Uh, so what we want you to do is to invite a friend, family member, or somebody that you know that may want to come that just needs to connect. We're not on have a stage up there. We're not on a preach. We're not doing that kind of stuff. It's just to connect them to our church and invite them to the next Sunday and invite them to these things. So we have a lot of things. So we're asking you this week, you can take more than one flower. We have plenty of flowers. You can go grab your five or six or seven more or something or grab five or six off the seats if somebody didn't grab one. But you don't have to just invite one neighbor. You can invite 10 neighbors. And if one of them shows up, that'd be great. But we want you to go do something this week to invite one of your neighbors to come to our fall festival next Sunday from five to eight. So if you are a first time guest here in the room, we'd love to connect with you. There should be a QR code up on the back screen here, if you would fill that out so we can get to know you better. There's uh, also a card in the back of your seat. We'd love to connect with you too. And we have a first time guest uh, gift for you that if you wanna hit the connect booth on the way out, or if you've rededicated your life to Jesus or you gave your heart to Jesus for the first time today, we'd love to connect with you too at the connect booth. So thank you. We will see you uh, next Sunday, unless you have a small group or youth tonight. We'll talk to you later. Thank you.